What is up, Sooner Nation? I'm Casey Mallon. Even my mama thinks my mind is gone, but it's not. It is in a Sooner state of mind. This is your new home for everything OU football. So take a bow and make sure you subscribe to Sooner State of Mind on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. This is how we do it. Go to Believe.com. That's B-L-E-A-V.com. Go to shows. Type in Sooner State of Mind. I know. It's easy. Ton of great content. Every team, every topic, everywhere. Believe.com. And if you want to watch Sooner State of Mind, you are not alone. Head on over to YouTube and search the Football Dudes like and subscribe, and never miss an episode. Before we move forward, shout out to my guy, Shake and Bake, Baker Mayfield, getting his first win in Tampa Bay. Played a great game last week at Minnesota. 23 at 34, 176 yards, two TDs, and no interceptions. Huge 20 to 17 win over those Vikes. Baker and the Bucks host the Bears on Sunday. And Jalen Hurts, the Eagles last week, they got a big win over New England, 25-20. It was not pretty, but a win is a win. They host the Vikes on Thursday night football. Sooners getting it done in the NFL. Speaking of OU football, don't you wish your coach was a freak like me or like Coach Bates and Coach Chavis? The hits just keep coming. Last week, Nigel Smith, Nigel Four-star defensive lineman out of Melissa, Texas, committing to the Sooners, adding him to a stacked defensive line. I believe this blessed union of souls is doing something special. As a matter of fact, I've got five on it. They are doing something special. All right, baby, let's not run away. Not really running away. More like a short road trip. Uh, Yeah, the 2-0 OU Sooners won't go chasing waterfalls, but they will travel to Tulsa to take on the 1-1 Golden Hurricane on Saturday. This is the 29th meeting between Tulsa and Oklahoma, and the Sooners lead the series 27-1. Tulsa 0-8 versus OU in the last eight meetings, and the last time they hooked up, OU won 52-38. What do we know about Tulsa? Well, it's a slut spelled backwards. Hey, watch it, creep. (laughs) You didn't know that, did you? The two head coaches, uh, Kevin Wilson, he's in his first year as a head coach at Tulsa. Sorry, Nick's texting. Um, But he and Brent Venables were both on Coach Stoops' Oklahoma staff. Uh, Kevin Wilson for nine years and BV for 13, um, getting their teeth cut back in the day last year his sixth uh as offensive coordinator at ohio state kevin wilson was selected as one of the inaugural recipients of the graphite award recognizing excellent in excellence sorry in offensive play calling efficiency um has always been known as a great offensive mind that's what got him to ou he's um hopped around a few places and it looks like he's settling in there at tulsa and he's got a good thing going. Um, week one, they beat Arkansas Pine Bluff 42-7. to seven. Last week, they got blasted by Washington 43-10. to 10. Moving into this one against the Sooners, not sure who will play quarterback for the Canes. Braylon Braxton, he didn't play. He hurt his ankle in the first quarter of the Arkansas Pine Bluff game. And then freshman Cardell Williams, he played last week 6-14 of 14 for 65 yards. Threw a costly pick in the end zone in the first half, but he bruised his thumb during a play in the second quarter. Had to be replaced at halftime. That meant it was junior Roman Fuller. He stepped in. He went 12 of 18 for 85 yards. Not a lot happened in there. He did throw a 15-yard pass to Luke McGarry early in the fourth. That was Tulsa's lone touchdown. So not sure who's going to be playing quarterback. Um, they have a, a few running backs there. And last week, Jordan Ford, Bill Jackson, and Anthony Watkins all had at least 50 yards rushing. Will they be strong enough to run on that OU defense? We shall see. Defensively, these Canes, they could not stop. And I'm calling them the Canes. I know it's a golden hurricane. It's singular, but I'm calling them the Canes. It's just easier. Um, but they could not stop Michael Penix. 
Most teams can't stop him either. He was in the house of stone and light. They watched the lefty throw for over 400 yards and three touchdowns. Tulsa was not able to sack Penix, but they did pick him once, so that's good for them. Not so much for Penix, but he had the last laugh. They were okay versus the run. Um, Washington 22-109. But if the Sooners can run for five yards of carry, it's going to be a long December day in September for those Golden Hurricanes. Um, kind of cool little side note here. The brothers, Jaden and Julian Soyman, Jaden the DT and Julian the linebacker, they both transferred to Tulsa and they're getting to finish up their collegiate careers um, playing together on the defense. It's kind of a cool thing to see um, the brothers getting their thing done there. But we're going to keep their heads ringing. You know why? Because the Sooners have three takeaways and no turnovers through two games. That's pretty good. Continue to protect the ball if they can eliminate some of the mistakes from the costly penalties. Then it's going to be looking really good for the Sooners. And I'm the only one. No, I'm not. Eight different receivers caught a pass for the Sooners last week. That's because Dylan Gabriel has looked sharp. I mean, all season long, he's looked great. Last week, 19 to 27, 71%, 176 yards and four touchdowns. He also rushed eight times for 20 yards. He's been solid. You know, they didn't take a lot of chances down the field last week. I don't know if that was due to the, the pressure up front or that the um, SMU secondary was just way off the line of scrimmage. Either way, though, uh, DG, super effective, um, took care of the ball, spread it around, is getting it going. It was a little mucky at the beginning. Seemed like there was some confusion, but they got that straightened out, and it wasn't great the whole game, but when they had to have it, when he had to, when it was dime time, he delivered a couple scoring drives late in that game to put it away. So um, it's also just going to be improving week to week. That O-line's got to get gelling, too. They've been pretty good in pass protection. The run game's been hit or miss, and the run game has also not been explosive. It is time to roll to me, and if it's rolling, it's to Wee Walker. He had a career-high 117 yards. On a career high, 21 carries last week. That's almost six yards of rush. He also caught three passes for 25 yards. Marcus Major, he was pretty good last week. Eight for 39, two receptions for 23 yards and a touchdown. I wish we would have seen more of Barnes and Sawchuck. I expect that to change soon. Sounds like both those guys have been battling some injuries and are getting closer to full speed and hopefully back for good. Like I said, missing that explosive run play. I think the longest uh, run play from scrimmage has been 30 yards, which is good, but that's the only one that's gone that long. There hasn't been a ton of big runs. That's the last thing missing from this run game. Maybe getting Barnes and Sawchuck in there will um, contribute to that a little bit more. So offense has been solid, taking care of the football. Um, being able to convert last week was a little tricky in the short yarded situations, but they've all been manageable. So they're doing good stuff on first and second down. Like to see a little more aggression in the, the pass game, but I'm okay with us averaging what is it, 50 something points a game so far? That is pretty good. Moving it over to the defense. You don't know how it feels, and you don't want to know how it feels to get hit by Danny Stutzman. This guy is kicking so much butt this year. He was named Walter Camp um, FBS National Defensive Player of the Week last week for his uh, game versus SMU. Led the Sooners 17 tackles, a sack, two and a half tackles for a loss, and a quarterback hurry. Those 17 tackles, one shy of his career high. And each week, he just seems to get better. Oh, and last week, he got that fumble recovery late. A key Lawrence. Popping that thing out and Stutzman recovering when it looked like SMU might be getting a little something, something going. So Stutzman is really thriving in this BV defense. He knows it. He's teaching it. He's living it. He's loving it. And um, each week he continues to get better. And each week I'll say, Danny, stay one more year. We want to see you take this, your game, to the SEC next year. 
um, those games have your personality written all over it. You are due, my brother. So I know that NFL money's calling, but let's hold off a little bit more. This little game we play called third down defense. It's no secret that it was an issue last year, but in 2023, the Sooners are allowing a third down conversion rate of only 21.4%. That's pretty damn good. Oh, you held SMU to four of 16 on third downs last week, 25%, two for four on fourth downs. Combine those at six for 20. And in each of the first two games this season, OU has held opponents at or below, like I said, 25% on third down. Pretty damn good. Lots of youth in this secondary, man. I am really digging what I'm seeing. And each week it seems to be someone different. Um, Key Lawrence has been solid. Walker's been good. The old vet, uh, Woody Washington's kicking butt back there. Peyton Bowen, he seems to be getting better, um, even, not even game to game, play by play. He's just figuring it out. He had the pump block last week. Um, he's doing a lot of good stuff there. Uh, Harrington, hopefully he's healthy. If not, you got Pearson in there. Billy Bowman, too, man. I love this guy's game. So many different people getting in there. RSJ is getting some love. Um, secondary. Deep AF, man. I'm digging all of that. The linebacking core, pretty good, too. You know about Stutzman and Canick. Uh, McKenzie's getting out there a little bit. like to see him do some stuff. Um, studs, dude. Kip Lewis coming along. I love all of these players. I love seeing what's happening with this transformation. Is getting there and up front, man. They're really starting to hone in on that, too. It's been great against the run. Would like to see a little more pressure in the backfield. Like to see some more hits on the quarterback. Um, but maybe they've been keeping stuff tight. Some of these schemes a little tight until they get into conference play. But I love what I'm seeing out of this defense so far. And uh, I think, you, you know, they held SMU to 11 points. Uh, and the touchdown drive was aided by two or three, uh, you know, a couple pass interference and a personal foul or a, uh, unsportsmanlike it was on the the coaching that wasn't even on players a sideline infraction so that uh, touchdown scoring drive was aided by a lot of penalties so overall defense was great last week and i think smu's offense will surprise some people moving forward so you got to love what you're seeing out of these sooners special teams this should be the players anthem and making opposing coaches want to scream Back-to-back games with big plays on special teams. We mentioned at week one, 100% pure love for a punt return for a touchdown. You got to love seeing Freeman do his thing. And we mentioned Bowen last week, punk, uh, blocking a punt. I gets high after love. I don't know how to behave when my special teams are going crazy like that. Ugh. Hopefully we can keep it up against a better competition. I think SMU was the best of the teams we'll see in the non-conference play. Should be able to handle this Tulsa game, no problem, um, as long as they don't overlook anybody over there, which I don't think they will. Want to see a little more aggression in the pass game, but just more cohesion. And if they can eliminate some of those penalties and not turn the ball over, I'm cool with that. But I would like to see this run game also get to the next level. Some more big plays to the house. So hopefully that's coming. They're just working it out and getting these guys dialed in. We shall see. Not a lot of boombastic games in week three. But as always, we still got you locked. Colorado State. At Colorado, the Buffs are 23-point favorites in this one. And look at the trajectory that they've gone on from the end of last season to hiring a prime to moving up like this in the first couple of games. Um, and I think they're going to be plenty motivated in this one, too, because Rams coach Jay Norville, former Sooners receiving coach, I'm going to guess he is not Coach Prime's best friend. He took a shot at Prime's habit of wearing a hat and sunglasses during news conferences, saying Wednesday during his weekly radio show, quote, I don't care if they hear this in Boulder. 
I told them I took my hat off and I took my glasses off. I said, when I talk to grownups, I take my hat and my glasses off. That's what my mother taught me, end quote. Well, if Shador took Matt Rule's shenanigans personal, how is he going to take Norville's attacks on his pop's drip? I think he's going to take it personal, and I think he's going to take it out on those Rams. Better just uh, keep thoughts like that to yourself, okay? Uh, it's a learning curve. We're all – this whole life is a learning curve for everybody. Um, Coach Norville getting a, a life lesson a little bit later on. All right, TCU at Houston to open Big 12 play. TCU, seven-and-a-half-point favorites in this one. Uh, they bounced back with a huge win last week after losing to the Buffs in week one. My question is, can Houston stop that TCU run attack? If they can't, it's probably going to be a pretty uh, long day for those Cougs there. And TCU, I still think they have a chance to be in the mix in the Big 12 when all is said and done. We'll see if they can start stacking some uh, good games together. In the conference game. Our, our future conference, the SEC, we got South Carolina at Georgia. The dogs, 27 and a half point favorites over those cocks. Um, it's not been great for South Carolina. They're going to have to play mistake-free football. Can Spencer Rattler play mistake-free football? Mm, I don't know that he can, and he probably won't against Georgia. Uh, probably going to be an L, a cocky L, if you will at the feet of those dogs, at the paws of the dogs, I should say. Um, this might be our best game of the week on paper. Another SEC conference game, Tennessee at Florida. The Vols are six-point favorites on the road, and neither team has looked that good so far this year. Um, Florida did not look good at Utah, a little better against lesser competition. Tennessee still trying to figure out um, life after uh, Hayden Hooker there. Um, Milton's been okay. Some growing pains there. Um, it's just not as exciting as it was last year, but it's always exciting to go down to the swamp and beat your conference foe if they can do that. Um, like I said, that line is minus six, so what do they think is going to happen in that game? All right, we talked about Michael Penix. Thrashing on the uh, the Golden Hurricanes last week. He's taken his talents to Michigan State. They're 17-point favorites on the road. And pretty good vibes for Washington. Panic's trying to put together a Heisman campaign. He's one of the more exciting quarterbacks, one of the several exciting quarterbacks in the, uh, the Pac-12 this year. Michigan State, it's all bad news coming out of there. Uh, Mel Tucker, ugh, I don't know how that thing is going to play out, but it's definitely a distraction. So will they be able to handle those distractions and panics coming in town? Probably not. Alabama. At Southern Florida, Bama 33 and a half point favorites. How do they respond after the beat down they got at the hands of the Bevos last week at home? Quinn Ewers, lighten that secondary up. Texas running on those boys. I bet they get a lot of that tightened up, the problems we saw in the secondary. We might see some players go to the bench, um, but they should have plenty to run over South Florida and um, – an angry saving is bad news for lesser opponents. All right, we got Northwestern at Duke. I'm trying to sell some of these games, people. They're not great, but some weeks are just duds in college football. What are you going to do? Northwestern at Duke. Duke, 17 and a half point favorites, looking to win five games in a row starting last season. Had the huge win over Clemson opening week. They're balling. They're trying to get a stake in the ACC finding if they belong or not. Are they a football school? Can Duke be a football school? Hey, so far so good. And they're, uh, you know, three score, three plus score favorites at home. So let's see what happens. Um, pretty sweet unis. And I like that style of football they've been playing. South Bama, not to be confused with Bama or any other Bama 
at Oki State. And the Pokes are seven-point favorites at home. Got a big road win last week. I didn't know how they would play out at Arizona State. And they played well enough to win that game. So that's a good road win. They're still sorting out their quarterback situation. Like I said last week, you got three quarterbacks. You don't have one. Someone's got to step up and take that job. Maybe we'll see that get dialed in this week before they move into conference play as well. Speaking of Big 12, we got one of them, BYU at Arkansas. And the Razor Pigs, Razor Bags, Hog Sueys, whatever you want to call them, are eight-point favorites at home. Um, Kind of a rebuild for BYU. I haven't really gotten to spend a lot of time on either one of these teams, but I'll get to get eyeballs on BYU at least setting up. I'm still trying to get the roadie out to that Sooners game at BYU in November. So I got to start scouting these guys and seeing what they're doing. But at least it's a single digit point spread because a lot of these games this week um, were double and sometimes uh, triple score point spread. So that says not. A lot of competition, but that means I can also focus my eyes on the Sooner game, as always, but not being distracted by any of the big games going on. So it's going to be a great weekend for Sooner football. Do you guys have questions? We've got answers. Hit us up at ssomhost at gmail.com. If you have any questions or stuff you want to see on the show, Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Football Dudes LA. That's the same on Instagram and Facebook. Also, like and subscribe to Sooner State of Mind on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you were playing along with the hidden theme, the theme was hit songs from 1995. We had 31 of them throughout the show. Did you notice any? Did you hear it? You're going to go back and play this show again and see how many you can find. Also hit me up SSOM host on Gmail. If you caught any of those, we have some cool stuff like that, uh, that we will sprinkle throughout the shows all season long. Don't forget to come back next week. We will recap the Tulsa game as well as some of the, uh, the good games, the better games, whatever I had in college football. We'll take a look at those. And that is before we move on to conference play with a huge game looming at Cincinnati. My name is Casey Mallon, and I am in a Sooner State of Mind. Have a great weekend, people. We'll see you soon.